Nicole Huntsman here from ModernCosmic.com. We have got our sun sign compatibility here on this video. Gemini are the people born on from May 21st through to June 20th. You'd be a Gemini sun. Gemini is a zodiac sign ruled by Mercury and I always think of a flock of birds chirping at each other and talking to each other. Gemini energy is really busy. Uh, we've got Mercury, which orbits the sun in 88 days. That's the year. That's a, that's a year for Mercury, right? It's very quick. Uh, so Mercury types, whether it's a Gemini or it's a Virgo, they have a nervous energy to them and a busyness. Gemini applies it a little bit more to the mind, but well, Virgo does too, but uh, it's it's communication. It's this sort of extroversion of this busyness. So a Gemini will, when they text you, or anyone who has a lot of Gemini in their chart, it's like long, long texts, or, you know, they'll keep in touch with you, or they, they, they really need communication from their partner, and they need that kind of contact. Uh, that's, uh, that's what they're good at. Um, also, Geminis, they need to be moving. They love to try new things. They always have new ideas. They're quite bubbly and refreshing, and um, they can change their minds a lot and change their life direction a lot because they almost have too many ideas and too many uh, things going on. Uh, they can also be a little bit fidgety mentally and physically, a little ADD. It's kind of a, a mercury trait. For high functioning Geminis, we have someone who's easy and breezy. Uh, they've got a cheerfulness, a versatility to them. They're good at multitasking. They're rational for the most part. You know, there are other things to look at in the chart that will suggest otherwise, but uh, they're open to new experiences. They're spontaneous and fun and they've got a good sense of humor, um, conversationalist. They're just kind of happy, you know, happy-go-lucky. That's very Gemini. If you're pure Gemini, um, they don't wade too much in those deeper waters of, um, of, of deep emotion and existentialist uh, feeling or thought. A low-functioning Gemini, on the low side, they can be overly loquacious, right? They can text you too much. They can, they can um, maybe not recognize when it's time to just, let's, we don't have to be talking the whole time. We can sit in silence. Remember, you need to look at the person's moon sign, their mercury, and other things in their chart and see where that sun is actually placed, which house it's placed in. That's going to, that's going to adjust this because Gemini is mutable, so it's quite overridable by other uh signs that are in the birth chart, okay? But for the most part, you know, they're, they're talkative. Um, and they, if they're not extroverted with their talkativeness, then it's happening inside of them, okay? So they're going to analyze everything, and they're going to have a lot going on inside of them. So th it's almost like the quiet Gemini is the one you really need to worry about because there's even more going on inside of them than the one that's uh, extroverting it. All right. They have an anxiety to them. They can be flirty, not really anything necessarily meant by it, but they, they are quite flirty with the opposite sex. It can be hard to pin down. They can have problems with commitment. They can have like a Peter Pan thing happening where they just want to be like a little kid for forever and they won't grow up and, you know, like buckle down to the realities of life. Uh, so they can be a little bit childish in a different way than Aries. It's just, it's kind of like they just don't want to take things seriously. They, they want to be free to... It's almost even just they change their mind so much that they can't just stay focused on one path. Gemini in love. Geminis like things to be fresh, light, bubbly, like I've said, you know, they're little butterflies flittering about from flower to flower. Uh, in love, they love they enjoy conversation. They have to have conversation. They have to have communication, uh, whether it is verbal, whether it is written through text or letters or sharing music with each other or sharing poetry or things you've, that have been read. You know, it's, they, they are always like talking to someone. <laughs> you know, true Gemini is quite, quite talkative and social. Um, and sometimes in romantic relationships, because they have this, this sweetness to them and this lightness and easiness, when they really fall in love with someone, they're not quite sure what to do with these feelings. It's kind of like, oh, Geez, like it's bringing them, they're usually up in their headspace and or this throat chakra area, right? This is where they operate. And it brings them down into the part of the body where there are no words. They can't put words on the feelings they're feeling. And that is really uncomfortable for someone who is used to and excels at putting words to things. So many times they run from commitment because they don't know what to do with it. They're like, what is this thing? Okay. So in love, Geminis many times have a harder time with people who are perhaps more watery or more feelers, this kind of thing. You know, they, they like to keep things light. And again, look at the other signs in the chart. Look at where that sun is placed to give you an indicator. If you've got someone who's got multiple planets and air signs, then that's what we're talking about. 
Gemini's expectations and love. So they need space, but they also need a lot of conversation and, and repartee and, and connection, which is an, a funny little thing, right? They just need space to know they can go and like wander off and do their little thing and then come back. They've learned some new things and you've got to learn some new things. And you have new stuff to talk about, new things to enjoy together, okay? They like jokes. They have like a little naughty sense of humor. Um, they love playing together. Uh, they don't like emotional mind games. They do not like passive aggression. The water signs rule that realm, okay? The water signs are like professional at passive aggression and emotional manipulation. Geminis are just going to be like, what are you doing? That is, uh, that doesn't work for me. And then they'll just flit off somewhere else, okay? You can't tie them down. If you try to tie them down, uh, you are fighting a losing battle. So, okay. Um, also, they don't like feeling a sense that their partner's leaning on them for their emotional validation. You know, Gemini, uh, they need a partner who is strong on their own, who, you know, doesn't need to be validated by them. You can't be clinginess, clingy with a, with a Gemini. That doesn't, that doesn't work for them. So Gemini's biggest fear. Now, because we have someone who is quite flighty, and they can be shallow at times, um, or they can appear shallow, it's just because they're interested in so many things, they're going a million miles a minute, and they got so much stuff going on in their head, and they, you know, going all these different directions, and they have this genius to them, you know, this Gemini Mercury quickness and quicksilver thing happening. They're afraid that maybe they really don't have the emotional depth, okay? A lot of times Geminis have been accused by loved ones in their lives that, that you know, can't you take this seriously? Um, why are you, why can't you commit to me? You know, these kinds of things. And the Gemini, this is an issue for them, that they, it's something that they really worry about because, as I said earlier, that hard space is not their natural habitat, okay? They are cerebral and they are, you know, throat shocker, they're communicators. Heart stuff, intuition, this does not have words. So unless that Gemini has some strong placements in their chart that sh they need some water placements or even some fire, which will bring them down into their body at least, or, or, or earth, um, you know, this is going to be a fear of theirs. They're going to, they're going to worry that, they're, they, that they don't have emotional depth. So don't ever accuse them of being shallow, right? Um, see them and meet them where they're at and help them put words to their feelings. Help them put words to the things that they can't voice, okay? That's how you can help them overcome the fear and help them to grow. So Cancer, these are our folks born from June 21st through July 22nd. Uh, cancer is traditionally the crab. That's the animal that we've used as the symbol for cancer. I like to think of a turtle. I think a turtle is a more apt symbol because with the turtle, um, yes, the cancer does have a little bit of a crunchy outer shell, right? And they like to pull themselves in when it's time to withdraw if they're in a situation where they feel threatened. But ultimately, it's also because they kind of carry their home around on their back. Uh, cancer types are nostalgic. They have a hard time getting rid of things, whether it's things, objects, or uh, old lovers or old friends. They, they hold on to the people or the things or the thoughts even, the values that they consider uh, important and um, that they have placed high on their, you know, uh, ladder of personal values or um, people that have made an impact on their heart. So with cancer, you've got an individual who's interested in security. That's why they, with objects or money, they, they're good savers a lot of times. It's because they're trying to uh, create this safe space in their life, all right? It's their womb. We associate cancer with the home. We associate cancer with, uh, it's a more of an introverted um, expression, okay? So cancer is a lot of times, if you had a pure cancer, uh, this is someone very sensitive and they are intuitive about where someone else is at emotionally and they won't necessarily say anything. A lot of times they'll just see you and they'll notice you um, and perhaps they will, they're like sponges, they'll take things in, they'll take information in without you really maybe even knowing that they're taking it in, um, and then it will come back out later. Um, they'll see you sort of repeat a pattern, and they'll see, oh, okay, this person's experiencing this, and they'll come give you a hug, or they will um, touch you, or they will offer to make you a meal, or, you know, this is a cancer thing. They're really sensitive to noticing these patterns in other people's emotional behavior. Um, even if you have a cancer with an airy, or an earthy moon, you know, there's still this, this sponginess to them. Okay, so on the high side with cancer, we've got someone who is sensitive to others. We've got someone who does have a strong ambition. Their desire to create security feeds their, um, 
drive. It feeds their their career ambitions many times. Um, you've got someone warm and affectionate. They have a nostalgic kind of nature to them. Um, they, you know, they can be sentimental in a way. So it depends on, of course, the entire chart. But a lot of times, cancers they're pack rats in a way. Whether it's that they collect a certain um, Okay, so for example, my mom, she's a gardener, and she plants anywhere she's lived, you know, that she's always had these beautiful flowers and whatnot, and she kind of collects plants, you know, she collects them and puts them around her and, like, you know, um, makes this little plant home, and then she, of course, takes care of them. That's very cancer, that that um, that hobby of hers. Um, and then, uh, you know, my boyfriend, for example, when he travels, he travels a lot for work, he collects the, he'll keep his flight uh, you know, the, his flight tickets or his receipts, and he'll use them in, in his books as, you know, little uh, bookmarkers. And they're me little mementos to remind him of the trip, and they're also something he's keeping physically around him. So that's kind of cancer uh, high side, but they're little pack rats in a way. But it's, there's a nostalgic na you know, quality or sentimental nature to it. Um, they also are really great at, as I said earlier, recognizing needs. They they have this motherly, mothering instinct, this desire to um, make you feel better and to give you love um, and to take care of you. And in particular, if you're sick or if you're, um, I don't know, just sad, emotionally having a hard time, they, that really pains them. They want to make you feel better. Okay, so on the low side with the cancer, they can be because they're, like I said, there's this introverted expression of their life force. They can sometimes appear to be aloof uh, or cold or standoffish. Um, and they kind of are. Remember, like the crab with his little shell and his pinchers, like he's like, ah. But really, a crab on the inside is mush, right? So they're, they're protecting. They, they sometimes will stand back and sort of hang back see if they're safe and secure in a situation, then they'll interject themselves. So they have a, you know, there's a, there's a, there's an, an introversion there of their self-expression. Uh, they can sometimes withdraw from c conflict. A lot of the water signs, when there is heavy-duty fighting or a conversation that needs to happen that's not a comfortable conversation, uh, water signs can sometimes withdraw. They check out. They back off, and they they move away from the fight. Even if you have someone that's quite aggressive in other ways, they can sometimes when things become, when their personal values are crossed, uh, you know, like in work and things like this, they can sometimes pull back and be a little passive aggressive. So that's something that cancers, you know, um, are known for. And it's almost because it's like, they don't want to be hurt also, of course, but it's also they, they pull back from the fight a little bit. Uh, and then they have to kind of regather themselves. And then many times they'll come back. So. In a relationship, my puppy's being crazy. Oh my gosh. Um, in a relationship with a cancer, you just have to, If sometimes they do just need that time too where they're introverted and they're doing their own thing. So just let them let them do it and uh, and they'll come back out. They'll turtle their heads back out. Oh, also, um, they can be a little bit uh, slow to open up. Uh, also goes with the need for security. They can be moody. They can be broody, broody like a brood mare. You know, kind of goes along with the motherly aspect. It's they have times in their life where they need to introvert, pull back, and just um, you know, be to themselves so they can process things. Just let them do it. They'll come back out. So, okay, Cancer in love. Now, Cancer is our zodiac sign that is sort of the most in flux. It's ruled by the moon, and our moon is constantly changing in our sky every couple of hours even, right? It's moving, and I mean, it's changing every second. It's moving uh, to some degree every second. So cancer is the same. Cancer, and because also think of the moon, how we can see one side of the moon and the other side is in total darkness. This is like the cancer's emotional nature in a sense. There's a polarity there. There's an up and down nature to it. Um, there are times when the cancer just really needs to, um, as I said earlier, they need to be they need to be inside of themselves. Okay. Now, a cancer with a really good partner, a good partner would be someone that recognizes that and protects that in the cancer. And um, my boyfriend, who's cancer, has a quote that I love, and I'm gonna I'm gonna ruin it. But it's um something about when you love someone, it's your job, it's your duty to protect the solitude of the partner, and that is the perfect quote for a cancer um, to hold as their ideal quote about what, what ideal love looks like. Uh, it's your job to protect your, your partner's space and their feelings, and also it's your job to provide them with a little womb where they can truly um, open up and emotionally 
give you what they have to give and receive what you have to give to them. They are um, very deep, deep people, and their ability to love can be overwhelming, um, even for, or, or I should say astounding is a better word, it can be astounding because it's really strong and deep, like the ocean, which is one of Cancer's rulerships. So, so Cancer's, their expectations and love. Um, they like to, Cancers are interesting. So while they have that introversion need, they also really enjoy having their partner physically around them. Um, whether they're kind of at home or just like running errands, they like being with their partner. Um, there is a comfort there to having that other person physically close to them. It's a grounding kind of a comfort. Um, and it just, they, it's home. It's like their home. Uh, so at home, obviously, being with you, but then also just going out and doing things together. That's something they, they enjoy because it's like taking their little home with them. Remember, they're sentimental. They like to hold on to things. And so if you're their partner that they love, then they'll want to like be with you. They'll want to have you, have you with them. Okay. So safety and security is also really important to the cancer. They, they expect their partner to be loyal and to be devoted to them. Um, and it's interesting, it, jealousy from a cancer is different than you'd see from perhaps an Aries or like a fire sign, like a Leo. Jealousy in all the signs is different. That would actually be a good video. That'd be an interesting video series. Jealousy in a cancer, it comes more from hurt feelings. It's more like, I gave you all of this. I gave you all of me. And now I feel like you took advantage of that. And and have been focusing your directions elsewhere, you know. So they just, they want to feel like it's safe for them to love you and for, it's safe for them to accept your love in return and that you're not going to hurt them once you're inside their little soft, mushy, you know, place, places. Okay, Cancer's biggest fear. You know, Cancer, they're moody. They're emotionally deep and they sometimes go to dark places. Uh, it's really common for Cancer sons even, you know, uh, Cancer mood even more so. There's an emotional depth there. The This is the part of them that's vulnerable, and it's the part that they may worry may be unlovable, okay? That it's too much for someone else to have to deal with, um, or that they're not sure they would just even want you to be in there because it just feels vulnerable and scary and like they're exposed. So their fear is that that's ultimately unlovable. Of course, it's completely incorrect. Um, you know, we're all lovable. So uh, with your cancer, just be tender with them and make sure that, that they know that... Um, you appreciate the things that they do for you and that you show them in return to your actions um, that you love them. Okay. All right, Gemini and Cancer. Uh, these two together, this is a, a kind of a, an odd coupling. Uh, we have Cancer, who is our mothering sign. Cancer is the womb. I think of Cancer as the turtle because <laughs> it carries its little home around on its back. Uh, and Gemini is this, you know, Gemini is the two, it's the twins, it's the two characters. And these two are never in the same place twice kind of a thing. You know, you, you don't quite ever know what to expect with the Gemini. Um, and Geminis do not like deep emotional clinginess or deep eno emotional sort of uh, uh, possession. They need things to feel free or else they start to get really kind of glommed down by emotion. So when you've got you know, cancer, this sign that has to do with the home and has to do with those deep, instinctive, unconscious feelings, um, there can be a little bit of a clash there between their basic fundamental drives. Um, Gemini's drive is to be constantly on the move, um, trying new things, thinking about new things, having conversations about new things, it's ideas, it's repartee, it's this sibling, it's got this very light, um, think of how you relate to a sibling, right? It's not the same as how you relate to a lover. Uh, if you have an intense love relationship, there's that fear of loss of the lover um, that strikes upon a chord that has to do with sexuality and your identity. Siblings, it's more you just love them unconditionally. So with Gemini and Cancer, um, there is an is an odd pairing because cancer wants that deep emotional bond. So long-term interaction between these two. Let's talk about how these two sort of approach love. Um, Gemini approaches love from this place of it's exciting and they like all the multiple opportunities that there are for love relationships. They like to try, you know, um, that's why Gemini's many times are known as sort of being flirts, you know, um, and having multiple partners or being, uh, especially Gemini males, being a little indecisive with kind of deciding on, the one that they're going to sort of stick it out with. Um, and it's because they're all about all of the possibilities. They're the opposite sign from Sagittarius, and Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter and all. This has to do with all of the potentiality and all the possible options that are available. Now, Gemini 
is the same. And Gemini wants to try all of those different um, options. Cancer is a sign that is ruled by the moon, uh, which is cyclical, which is always changing. So cancers, it's interesting, Cancers need security. They're already built in such a way that there's a moodiness and a flux to a cancer's sort of emotional nature that they need a partner that is grounded and secure or else they feel especially sort of um, in flux, right? They need a partner that can sort of ground them and help them feel like the, the ground isn't slipping up underneath them. So Gemini is not really the best partner for cancer, okay? Okay, now I never rule out any of the sun sign combinations just based upon the sun signs alone. So let's talk about if their moons are happy with one another, then you're great. And when I say when they're happy, that means are they in the same element, uh, which means they would be trining one another of the same trip, or are they uh, two moons that are perhaps falling in houses in such a way that they are enhancing, let's say, I don't know, let's say they both have air moons, okay, but the Gemini, his airy moon, falls into one of the Cancer's water houses. Okay, so conflict between these two would be Gemini's need for movement, Gemini's need for change, and Gemini's dis dislike of sticking. See, see, Cancer focuses on going really deep. Cancer focuses on anchoring oneself and creating home. Uh, cancer is instinctive. It's the emotions. It's that part of you that doesn't have words. Gemini is totally different. Gemini is all about being, hi guy, being in multiple places. Gemini is all about, is all about words. They're all about communicating and, and putting, naming things, right? Putting words to things. So these two are just very different, very, very different. Um, they'd have to have moons that were happy. Specific areas of harmony between these two would be, let's see, uh, perhaps the Gemini could be, especially Gemini maybe to my male, but they could be seen as slightly selfish. I mean, they're really kind of focused on their thing. They're so busy bouncing around from thing to thing that they sometimes forget to take care of their partner. Um, so let's say perhaps that Cancer has that ability to nurture and care for uh, the Gemini, and that could be an area of harmony. Um, also, you know, Cancers are a cardinal sign. They're interested in starting new projects, uh, and, and they're actually very ambitious. Even though they're the sensitive, spongy personality type, they, they like new projects. Um, so you could have a little bit of a conflict between, um, just on the emotional level between these two, okay? The Cancer being maybe passive aggressive, the Gemini being just, oh, please get over it. Uh, and then the Gemini also sort of mirroring the Cancer's behavior and being passive aggressive as well. Gemini is the twins, and many times they kind of will operate in a way where they're sort of mirroring other people's behavior. They're like little mimics and little mimes, or not mimes, but little mimics. And so Maybe they parrot that cancer's behavior, that passive aggressive behavior, and you have this little back and forth dynamic that happens. Okay, how others will see their relationship. You know, as far as if this is two people, a guy and a girl, or two people who are in, who are homosexual but are in a sexual relationship, um, it, it could be seen just as sort of a, a, it's just an odd pairing. It feels like siblings to me. Um, Gemini gets that with a lot of the signs they don't totally get along with. They're sort of able to make it work with a lot of different signs just because they do have the sibling sort of vibe happening with Gemini. But you know, I mean, in Gemini is a curious sign, so they're kind of curious about people too. But they are detached. Gemini is more of a detached uh, energy. It's an air sign. Um, it's, more, it's interested in multiple experiences with multiple people. So, and Cancer is really interested in sort of like bringing it all home, which would be sort of the experience with one person, going deep with one person, now with multiple people. So other people are going to see this relationship as sort of a weird fit. I know it's not a good description, but, um, you know, if the moons are happy, then it will work. Otherwise, this is seen as a, a, an odd coupling.